Hi guys, Tony here from Tony Reviews. This week we're going to take a look at the task that has been the bane of my life for the whole entire van build and that is the bed stroke seating area which is this small little seat how is it going to extend out to almost six foot wide when I only want it to be just as wide almost as the cupboards and that has perplexed me this entire van build I built the whole thing knowing I wanted to sit here but not knowing how I was going to do it and turn it into a bed so if you want to know how I turn this small seat into a six foot wide bed stay tuned let's roll the b-roll and I'll show you how to do it Right, here we are. You might be wondering what all this wood and business is happening. Yet again, yes, it is van building. Um, I'm currently in the process of making and painting and cutting all the bits of wood that are gonna make up the seating area slash extended bed frame. Um, I don't have a plan. I've been ruminating over this build for the whole time that I've been doing the van build actually it's been sat in the back of my mind and since I changed the plan from the original plan way back when um, I didn't really know how I was going to extend my short little seating area the full width of the van and you know you can't really buy you can buy these sort of slide out stock things um, but they don't extend to the extent that I am needed to extend to so this is where we are at the moment I've got this rough, rough plan. So my seating area is gonna be 70 centimeters wide, which is just gonna extend past the cupboard. And I know that it needs to be roughly 35 centimeters high. And that is because the way I've measured that is I did a seated wall crouch, put my bum off the floor and sat roughly and said, right, measured it with a tape measure and went, it's about 35 centimeters. So roughly, this is how I've made my plan. It's going to be about 70 wide, 35 high, but I've got to get, even if it, even if that extends out, I've got to get this to extend to 173 centimetres and it, the base is only going to be 70. Um, so the idea is to have an extended piece that pulls out, but then a flappy piece that then flaps out for the last little segment where your feet are going to go. Um, it probably be like the back of your back of your knees up to your, your, the end of your feet. This is the plan. This is where it's at. The actual mechanical workings of it, though, how it's actually physically going to come together, I don't know. You know, we've got to think about things like the hinges and when that folds up, like the gap between that and the back, and making sure that I don't go past that 70. The Z bed that I'm using is 70 centimeters wide, so I know that my frame with all the gubbins can't go past that but yet it needs to extend to 173 so this is the dilemma it's all up here at the moment it's half down there on that little bit of paper let's get to it and see how we get on sides everything's going to sort of slide in and out at this level um, so my slats my sort of finger slats that are going to slide in and out need to fit within this so what I'm going to do is roughly just going off topic quickly but when I when I when I clad the van with my um, battens when I battened out the van when I insulated the van I've left these bits of blue tape and if you've watched the build series you'll probably think why has she put this blue tape and left it there well that is because these are where my ribs are so I know that I'm going to screw my batten in to where these go um, 
so it, when you're doing stuff it's always about the fore, the forethought about wh when you're going to do stuff so i knew when i was going to make the bed i'm going to need to know where to screw into because the walls as we know are only five mil thick whereas behind this in these battens i've got um a nine mil batten plus there's a, a the metal ribs of the van so it's going into the actual metal rib and the nine mil with this batten through the five mil as well so that is like a proper structural piece this is going to be the width the two by one is going to be the width of my bed slats so if i what i've done is just bought this block out so i'm going to know that my batten is going to need to come up to this level roughly there and again on this side I mean we're going to need to um, yeah so there you go sort of sitting flush with this but I'll measure the bottom as well just to make sure the height of it so that we can double check but as we know nothing is square in the van so when I'm looking at this the box actually looks like it's it's not square but then if I put the um, square in it it's saying it is uh, and obviously the walls of the van you know if you're measuring from the wall out it's not going to work because the walls of the van are not square they run at an angle as well they're like a wedge shape so we really we're making this box to be square because this has to slide in and out completely true um, anyway and I'm going to put another batten here because I want the width when the bed folds up it's got to have enough and then also when it's flat it will sit on the second batten but when it lifts up there'll be a little bit of a gap from behind you won't feel that because it's only going to be one inch or one inch uh, gap there and with the bedding you've got a little pillar that comes out this far as a backrest so you won't even feel that little one inch gap down there so that's what we're up to at the moment it's looking already like it's taking shape i'm well happy out at the moment if you can see the front of this so I what I think the next thing I'm gonna need to do is make two frames which are like a pair of spectacles so basically like a, a rectangle that goes all the way across these two panels this panel to this panel so let me see let me see can you see right so what i think i need to now do because my frame is made out of this one and a half inch square which i think actually is about 35 or 33 to 35 mil square these battens are and that's what i've made the cabinetry out of so i think what i'm going to need to do is make my front piece which is what my slats so say this is part two that you sit on and part this is part one that you sit on and part two slides into that and extends out part three then flaps out so i need to make the bit for where the, the frame for where part one sits on and finishes at and fixes to and then the second part for part two which is the part that butts up to part one which will extend out so i need two frames made from this 35 mil thick so I need to work my way back because they've got to finish at this end point this end point and work in so I need to get a couple of blocks and work out where that part one's going to sit to if that makes sense but I think the best way what I can do now is actually start making my two um my two sort of I'm going to call them spectacle frames because there's going to be a column in the middle to give me that strength when you lay on the bed in the middle 
and so I look like a pair of glasses. So I need two pairs of glasses going in there, which is what I'm going to get onto now. So if I'm what I'm doing is using these spacers because the spacers that is the level that this is going to sit at. So we know we need to chop this down a little bit so that this fits within this. Right, so the idea is this bottom bit is going to sit under here and then I'm going to have these rafters, support beams, which I'll screw in from there and the underneath one will be screwed under from underneath so I'm going to make sure that it fits first and the other thing wants to be tight so because it is tall, you know, use one as the, your template piece then you know any little differences won't be too too much it will all be very near if not the same as i'm actually using the back wall and the two side pieces as a brace for where i'm screwing in so i'm going to turn it up that will be the bottom but anyway let's get this centimeters and a little bit wider because I knew um, that my cabinets are going to be that wide well the bed is around about that as well so the battens are running here and all along here so when I, you hear that that's my hammer drill just giving a little extra push going into all of those secure fixings that I've put underneath as well plus we've got the 12 mil ply that the floor is as well so this is uh, going to be really secured but it has to be because obviously it is going to be the bed and it is going to be the uh, seating area so yeah that is nice and solid so it's just a case of lining the pocket hole jig up this time I'm going to use this one because this, this hole does 12, 19 and 25 mil pieces of timber and this is one uh, two by one so it's uh, 20 mil thick. So I'll get that in the middle, just clamp it shut. That should now be the same for all of my beams.
is the little gas strut and you've got two well three attachments actually you've got this one they're like they're like a, a ball and socket joint type thing but you've got two two the same that are like this but one faces up that way and one i've already put it on but one faces the other way so what i'm trying to attempt to do is sort of work out i think it's going to have to go around about sort of like this to hold it up moment of truth it's standing up i can't believe it it's standing up yes it is standing up will it shut oh bloody hell right back to the drawing board on that one so i'm gonna have to get some long gas struts there's i've worked it out this needs a longer arm because it's got a fit within the underside of that bed so i'm gonna get some longer gas struts but no fear that idea it did work and it was fantastic when it did but it was bit crap when it didn't shut but we're gonna get a new gas strut and it'll be fantastic so this is gonna be the base frame that covers the uh, the bottom seating unit now I've doubled up my little shaker style here and that is because I have bought the original Lagoon swivel table system so I'm gonna mount it about here so that you've got access to the handle although the handle does have a nifty little feature in that you can push this button and you know rejig it like any way you want so anyway that is where i'm going to have it so that i've got a clear view so that when you're sat on the bed you can raise this up put your little table on and swivel that between the swivel seat and the bed area or the seating area so I've doubled up my battens, my shaker style battens, to give enough width to this. And I don't think it actually looks out of place within the whole, you know, within the whole uh, face front either. So where I've designed my two spectacle frames on the, uh, the seating to, to clamp together, part one and two to clamp together, it means when I put my table, it's going to actually sit proud on that side because I've got the, the length of the bolts and the washers going on. So I've used my forcing the bits to countersink out the depth of the bolts and the washers. So hopefully there shouldn't be um, too much of a gap. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be pushing against it too much. That's hard to get out of there now, but basically you've got the depth of that going through anyway so it should su provide enough support i've really got to stop saying oh go into plan this is turning out really well that's you know oh that's the right size and i didn't even you know measure know that they came in this size and basically look the bed is having trouble sliding in with this uh, bracket all the way across. So I'm going to have to finish these battens to spectacle, the inside of Spectacle 1. So as you can see, if I lift that out of the way, these are going to have to finish on the end of Spectacle 1, which isn't a problem. And then so they will finish here at the end of that spectacle. So that when I slide this in, they're flush with the end of spectacle one, so they don't have to slide on the top of spectacle two. So, 
this is the bed finished. These cushions are not the actual cushions that will be on it. I'm just sitting on them and showing you what it would look like once it is in its full sort of state. These are actually off of my sofa. Um, but the bed is now completed. The bed seating area is now completed. It's somewhere to sit and eat and play games and enjoy the view and all the rest of it. But I'm going to show you a little demonstration of how it actually works. Now, I've made this seating area, which actually comes from, say, I think it's about 55 centimetres wide and it goes all the way out to just under six foot. I think it's five foot 10 or five foot 11 in um, depth. And it folds out into three parts and I'll show you how it all works. We'll come back to the seating and the cushions in a bit. But, this is how it actually works in real life. So part one, you remember part one? part one and part two so this is part two which butts up against part one which comes all the way out and stops just shy of this cabinet and that's because I've put a stop in the back of these slats which will automatically stop it I can't if I wanted to pull it any further so there's no da danger of me damaging my cupboards by pulling it out um, I've also now fitted the the gas strut Remember the gas strut? So the gas strut now holds the back up. This is the first time actually that I'm doing this, so you're getting to see me do it first hand. I probably will get a better technique than this, but this is how it works at the moment. So, let's put that down for now. So, I've got these little clamps. Do you remember I mentioned about the little clamps? So these little clamps are what I'm going to make put this uh, spectacle which are gonna, is going to hold the feet end. So it literally just goes like that. And then all you do slot one foot on there slot the other foot on there and then there you have it you have your seating so I haven't got the seating like I mentioned but just sort of see it like this at the moment imagine there's another one there this is off my sofa but this is how you will sleep so it's great to actually have it working um, and not creaking or cracking fingers crossed it's, uh, it's working really good. That's the first time I've actually used it, laid it out as a bed. And these cushions are way too big. But you can also do it from within the van. You could just put the feet on this way. And then unscrew your spectacle inside the van if you wanted to do it inside and not go outside but i'll probably i mean i will get a technique i would imagine once i start using it but it's good to have my little gas strut in there now and this spectacle i designed to fit exactly inside the bottom base um, so that i can put everything away so then that just goes down like that. Slides back. And there we have it. So the only thing I've got to do is now get some upholstery done for this seating area. This is obviously way too thick. That sort of resembles a bit like what the Z bed I had in here was like. Just a little bit too thick. I need something that's thinner. I'm potentially thinking one piece that I'll sit on here, one piece for the back piece, so that'll be two pieces in the bed, 
and then the third piece maybe will be the size of the seating area but two cushions cut in half so that they can fit under the bed as well so what you're actually sitting on is one piece here and one backrest and the two extra pieces that will go on part three will go in the base so i hope you found this week's video helpful useful insightful um if in terms of the actual bed i didn't actually for this one i didn't make a plan i i knew where i wanted it to pull out to i knew that part one had to be a certain depth to sit on comfortably and not feel like you're perched and going to slip off so i knew it had to be a certain width i knew part two had to stop here because this cupboard is wider than this cupboard so i knew that i had to get it to pull to a maximum of that depth and then i knew that obviously part three had to be skinnier well fit within parts one and two when they're all concertinaed up so the gap between this and this had to be you know certain depth so that when it folded and landed um it, it was not too short of the the door so that you you know you know you're not hanging so i knew these things but i didn't actually have a proper plan it was just built as i went and you saw from the build that i was actually making it up as i went there's still a little few finishing touches i've got to do i've got to fill all these um i'll just put it that way i've got to fill all these little screw holes with um filler sand them back and paint them over so it's got a fresh coat there's also some other little bits of painting because i'd only undercoated the wood so i want to give it a whole coat of the exterior stuff this washable exterior stuff but i'm really pleased with how it's turned out um all i've got to do now is get some seating upholstered to finish the van off i'm currently also making a swivel tabletop because i've now installed I've now installed the swivel seat on the front, which I'll show you in a bit. And that will mean that you can then sit here, someone can sit there, you can have a little cup of tea conversation, you can have a table in between and, you know, both put your cups on the table, play a game of cards, whatever you want to do. Let's get the table out, I'll show you the table. So... I actually went for the official Lagoon tabletop. Now there are some cheap China imports out there and usually I am one to go for a cheap China import, but bearing the amount of time and money and effort that I've spent on doing this project, I didn't want to then, you know, finish it off with something that was gonna be a little bit, not do the job properly. So you've got this, you've got this panel and you can buy these brackets and put them anywhere else on that you want a swivel um, or you want your table to go but I decided to have it here because I knew that I was going to have it halfway between this seating area and the, and the swivel in front seat so this is the bracket that you put your tabletop on and that will go like that and then you can have it anywhere you want again you can do the height you can have this slightly higher if you want so that you can then swivel that so you know it's fully functional and swivels at all directions and it moves really nicely it feels really solid it doesn't feel like it's gonna bend or break all the parts feel like they're really quality pieces but this will be ideal for me when I've got my laptop on here on the table cup of tea I can do my work and it's gonna be fantastic this is just really getting to all the little finishing touches. I'm going to show you the swivel seat quickly. So this is the swivel seat turned round. Move that bottle of water. Um, again, like I said, this will... This, let's just do this a minute. So these button handles, you can move so they don't hit anything, but I could sit here, have a cup of tea, share the table with whoever's might be sitting there. Um, you can have your dinner, play a game of cards, do whatever you want to do. You could put your feet up, put your laptop here, work from here. You could work from over there. It's just so versatile now. It just gives so many options. Um, and this swivel table as well actually 
will fit and go under the bed. So this will all go away and be hidden underneath. Um, so again, you haven't got things hanging about or going about. It just, yeah, gives so many versatile options for working, eating, being a lot more comfortable in the van. I mean, the whole time I've gone away on holiday in this van, I've had a fold out Z bed on the floor. And on the days where you've been in the van, if it's been raining, I've been stuck sitting on the floor um, eating my dinner or watching Netflix or something and you can't see because you're so low down I mean my head's below this you can't see out the windows so this now will just be like luxury you know I'm actually sitting on a sofa um, I can have company in the van and they can sit you know and not have to sit on the floor it's just going to be just so much better now I'm just so happy with how it's really turned out um, I've amazed myself to be honest it's um, far better than I thought I could actually achieve so yes yeah, absolutely brilliant and uh, I'm currently working on a tabletop to work on you know that's going to be in the van as well and it's a bespoke tabletop I did sort of think oh I could use a little bit of this but I'll take you on the tabletop journey in the next video because that is quite a, a journey um, but yeah, so I really hope that you've enjoyed this build series. It hasn't come to an end yet, so don't just think, oh, the build series is finished, what a shame. Or you might be relieved. <laughs> but um, there's a still a few little bits, a few little touches, things going on all the time in the van, but majority, the van is now finished. It's almost complete. It's on the end stages now. So I hope you have enjoyed the series. I hope it's given you some ideas about things you might want to do in your van. Uh, maybe if you're worried, you know, you've never done anything like this before and you're thinking, can I actually achieve this and can I get a good finish? Believe me, if you really, you know, re research what it is you want to do, start looking how, what materials people are using, how they're using them. Um, you know, just watch the build series to sort of get you started and move on and watch some other ones and compare how different people are doing different things. And rest assured, like once you get your teeth into it, you'll just start you just start, the knowledge will come to you because you just know how to do it. And I know it sounds like, oh, you just know how to do it, but you will. Once you get going, it's like the momentum builds and you just keep rolling and you'll keep going. And, you know, if you do like what I've done, you know, it becomes your passion. You're doing it all the time. You'll pick up so many skills that you never knew you had or that you could develop in such a short amount of time. And, you know, you'll hopefully end up with a beautiful van that you can go around holiday on, go on all these adventures and have a fantastic time. So if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. You can do so, click the little button below, click the little bell icon, share, like, subscribe, all of those good things. And that will mean that you'll know, you're notified. If you click the bell, it means you're notified when I next release a video. And if you subscribe, then obviously it helps me out to grow the channel and hopefully push this to more people who might be interested in doing their van builds or adventures or whatever it is that I've got going on on the channel. If you also haven't yet checked out the Let Us Live website, go to www.letuslive.co.uk. It is a website which is completely inspired and dedicated to motorcycles and adventure. If you're into any of those things, you're definitely going to find some stuff on there that you're going to like. And if you put Tony Reviews in the checkout, you get a little discount there as well. So until next time, all that's left to say is safe riding, safe driving, happy adventures, and I'll see you all in the next one.